Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today, we will be discussing about this topic called as breast carcinoma. This is mainly done for MBBS students. So, what we will discuss is mainly the classification. There are three types of classification. One is based on the morphology of the tumors. One is based on whether the tumors are expressing any hormone receptors. And third is based on gene expression profiling. Mainly, we check the mRNA levels here to know the levels of gene expression. Then we will talk about the etiology and pathogenesis of breast carcinoma. We will discuss about the morphology, the metastasis or the spread of carcinoma and the prognosis in the next video. So, let us start with this video. So, why do we have to know about breast carcinoma? Because breast carcinoma is the most common malignancy of women globally. Excluding the non-melanoma skin cancers, this is the most common one. And this also accounts for majority of the cancer deaths in women. So as MBBS doctors, we are supposed to know about this most common malignancy of women, that is breast carcinoma. So coming to the classification, the morphological classification divides breast carcinoma into two main categories. One is non-invasive carcinoma and the other one is invasive carcinoma. Non-invasive carcinoma is also called as in situ carcinoma or carcinoma in situ mainly because it is within the basement membrane. Basement membrane acts like a boundary beyond which the carcinoma does not go down or invade the underlying tissue. So this is only present in the epithelium up to the basement membrane. So there are two varieties that is ductal carcinoma in situ and lobular carcinoma in situ which we will be learning during the morphology. The second category is that of invasive carcinoma where the carcinoma is spreading beyond the basement membrane. So, what comes under this category? There are many types under this category. So, let us see the second type. Here we have invasive lobular carcinoma which accounts for 10 to 15 percent of the breast carcinomas. Carcinoma with medullary features which accounts to approximately 5 percent of breast carcinomas and mucinous carcinoma also called as colloid carcinoma. This also accounts for approximately 5% of the breast carcinomas and tubular carcinoma which approximately is 5% and there are many other types but these are the ones which we frequently see. So here we have all these lobular, medullary features, mucinous carcinoma, tubular but all the other carcinomas which show this invasive, this ductal appearance, they come under this carcinoma that are not of a special type. They do not have these features of lobular, medullary or mucinous and other carcinomas. So they all come under invasive ductal which are up to 70 to 80 percent. So in short form you can write as IDC NOS where NOS is not of a special type. So this is the morphological classification. Next we go to the second type of classification that is based on the tumor cells expressing hormone receptors which we usually check by immunohistochemistry okay so there are three types in this er positive her2 positive and triple negative we check for er pr and her2 nu that is estrogen receptor progesterone receptor and her her2 nu receptor so, the, in the first category, 50 to 65 percent of the cancers fall under this category. This is ER positive but HER2 negative. In the second category, there is HER2 positive expressed by most of the tumor cells. And this accounts to 10 to 20 percent of the cancers and it ER can be positive or negative. And last is triple negative. That accounts to 10 to 20 percent of the cancers where estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor and HER2 receptor all three are negative which is not very good because here if the receptors are positive we can always give 
uh, antagonist treatment okay against this estrogen receptors as well as progesterone receptors and her2 receptors but if it is triple negative the patients will not be responsive for hormone therapy the third type of classification is based on gene expression profiling mainly we check for the mrna levels which will tell us the level of gene expression so based on this category there are four one is luminal a luminal b her2 enriched and basal like so luminal a category tumors will will be of lower histological grade and they will be er positive but her2 negative when luminal b will have higher grade of histological appearance and they will be er positive but her2 positive her2 enriched will have majority of the cells expressing her2 positive cells and er negative and basal like it's called basal like mainly because it resembles this myoepithelial cells which form the basal layer in the ducts so they are er negative and her2 negative so this is the third type of classification we have learned about three types of classification first one was based on the morphology of the tumor cells second we learned about the tumor cells are expressing hormone receptors or not and third is about the mrna levels or gene expression next we talk about epidemiology and risk factors so the etiology is also under this okay we'll start with the age most of the women who get breast cancers are above 50 years of age approximately 75% of women and less than 40 years it is quite rare while men it affects only 1% of the men compared to women then the gender as we have told in females it is more prevalent in male it is only 1% of the all breast cancers and family history if the particular patient has got first degree relatives who have got breast carcinoma very early in life then she has more risk of getting breast carcinoma while the geographic factors race and ethnicity they play a role mainly it is more common in america and europe this is because their uh, reproductive history or reproductive practices breastfeeding practices as well as their diet is different from asians and africans we know a little about reproductive history how that affects mainly if the patient is exposed to high levels of these hormones at a very early level or uh, early age that is early menac or there is nulliparity they are not exposed to pregnancy hormones older age of first pregnancy and absence of breastfeeding so they are prolonged exposure to estrogen next we have ionizing radiations so for example if a patient has got hodgkins lymphoma so these patients will be exposed to radiations to the chest at teenage that is the most common age group for hodgkins lymphoma is teenage and early adolescence so when the breasts are developing if they have radiation to the chest there is likely chance that they will get breast carcinoma later so the risk increases it's not like everybody will get but the risk increases and there are other factors like post menopausal obesity which gives rise to more estrogen hormone replacement therapy alcohol and mammographic density so these are the other factors which also contribute to the risk factors or etiology of breast carcinoma we have finished with the classification we finished with the etiology now we go to pathogenesis So pathogenesis can be described under three headings one is genetic second is hormonal and third is environmental so under genetic there are few genes which are most commonly involved we'll discuss about these so mainly this there are these driver mutations so driver mutations are the mutations that lead to breast carcinogenesis they could be inherited and acquired the most common is brca1 and 2 so brca1 and brca2 they usually repair this double stranded dna breaks but when they are mutated especially when both alleles are mutated what will happen is the dna will not be repaired and 
that yet weakened cell will keep multiplying and result in carcinoma. Next is TP53, which is tumor suppressor gene. When it is not suppressed, when this gene is mutated, it will result in breast carcinoma. P10 is a negative regulator of the pro growth PI3K AKT pathway. And if that gets affected or is mutated, then what will happen? This growth will not be controlled and it will lead to carcinoma. All these three, when they are mutated, it will lead to production of carcinoma, but HER2, HER2 will not get mutated, it will get amplified. So HER2, when it is expressed, it will promote cell proliferation and oppose apoptosis, so leading to growth of the tumor. So this is the first pathway, mainly there is a normal breast, but that person has got germline BRCA2 mutations, okay, BRCA2 mutations. So first the patient will have flat epithelial atypia in the duct cells, terminal duct cells. There will be epithelial atypia, mainly there will be high NC ratio, nuclear pleomorphism, all this. Then they will have the second mutation which is PIK3CA which accounts to PI3K protein. Um, so this leads to atypical ductal hyperplasia which is a precursor lesion. And this progresses to ductal carcinoma in C2 and finally to invasive carcinoma. So most of these carcinomas, they are of this luminal type as we have seen in this uh, um, genetic profiling classification that there is this luminal type category. So this comes under the luminal type of breast carcinomas. This pathway accounts to that and it accounts to 50 to 65 percent of the tumors. The next pathway is in a normal breast, the patient will have germline TP53 mutations. So tumor suppressor is gone. Then there is HER2 amplification which will again promote growth. So first lesion will be atypical epocrine adenosis. Mainly the adenosis is increasing number of SNI per uh, lobule and epocrine change might be there in the ductal epithelium and that can show atypia and that leads to TCIS and finally invasive carcinoma. This comes under the genetic profiling classification of HER2 rich and accounts to 20% of the cancers. The third type of classification and uh, the pathogenesis is if the patient has got germline BRCA1 mutations. That will lead to a lesion which we um, uh, which we have still not found out and then the patient can have TP53 mutation plus one more BRCA1 mutation which will lead to both the alleles inactivation. It will lead to DCIS and finally invasive carcinoma which is ER negative, HER2 negative which is that basal like as we have already discussed. It resembles this myoepithelial cells in the duct. So basal like. So these are the three parts of the genetic pathogenesis. Second and hormonal. And hormonal is usually some of the breast cells they can produce estrogen. So when this estrogen they will stimulate the production of various growth factors which will promote the growth of tumor development. Now this can act by autocrine or paracrine mechanisms. Autocrine means if a breast cell is producing this estrogen, then it will act on that same breast cell, that is autocrine. And paracrine means it will act on the adjacent breast cells. Then once the precursor lesion is formed and there is more of estrogen, it will proliferate fast towards the development of cancer. So that is how hormonal influence plays in a role in the pathogenesis of breast carcinoma. Third, we have environmental factors. We have already discussed the diet plays a role, reproductive patterns and breastfeeding practices are thought to be involved in this environmental factors of breast carcinoma. And because of those patterns, we see that most of the breast cancers are seen in women of European descent. Radiation exposure also has a, play, a role to play because of exposure of radiation, ionizing radiations to the chest. So this is about the pathogenesis. So we have discussed about three things mainly, that is three types of classifications. Again, about morphology, about whether the tumor have hormone receptors, 
and third is about the genetic profiling which mainly tells about the mRNA levels of the particular gene expressed. Then uh, we talked about etiology, risk factors, epidemiology. They are very important to know and will be asked in the exams. And uh, the third part is about the pathogenesis which has uh, hormonal, genetic as well as environmental factors. Under genetic we have three pathways and we need to know about these three pathways and the common genes that are affected. I hope it's clear. In the next class, that is next week, we will be talking about the morphology of the breast cancers. We will also talk about how the breast cancers are spread. In morphology, we will talk about DCIS, Paget's disease as well as carcinoma. And finally, we will talk about what are the prognostic factors. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please like, share and subscribe this video as well as this channel and uh, do comment about how it helped you. So that's all for today. This is Dr. Susan signing out until we meet in the next video.